I've lost a foot. I've lost a foot. Not my foot. They're fine. A foot. 12 inches from my belly. I've been intermittent fasting for less than five months and I've lost a foot. That's my belly. January 19, 53 and a half inches. That's me today, June 10th. Less than five months later, 41 and a half inches. I'm still nowhere near where I want to be, but after just 19 weeks, it's a good start. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how intermittent fasting has played a major role. Stay tuned. If you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it sounds pretty extreme, but it's not. It's really time-restricted eating, where you limit the number of hours in a day where you eat. And everybody does it anyway. When you have your eight hours sleep, you're not eating. Intermittent fasting just extends it a bit. The most popular one is the 16-8 fast, and that's the one we'll be concentrating on in this video. So if you wanna know everything there is to know about the 16-8 intermittent fast, Stick around. The 16-8 intermittent fast, as the name suggests, means that you're not eating for 16 hours out of 24 hours, which gives you eight hours to eat. What are the benefits of that? Well, a lot of them are widely discussed and open for debate. But one thing that's not up for debate is that it's a really effective way to control your calories. Because it doesn't matter how many times you get told it needs repeating, the only way to lose fat is to be in a calorie deficit. That is to burn off more calories than you take in. And the 16-8 fast is a great way of regulating that. And it just makes life a whole lot simpler. What should I have for breakfast? Should I have bacon, sausage, eggs and beans? Or should I try one of these healthy breakfast cereals? Full fat milk, semi milk, no fat milk? Or maybe I should just have one of these cereal snack bars. How much sugar's in one of those? Well, if you're fasting and you're not eating breakfast, none of those decisions need to be made. You're not having breakfast. Simple, isn't it? I can now eat something at 12 o'clock have a snack at four o'clock and still have an evening meal at eight o'clock. That's intermittent fasting, skipping breakfast, easy. It's not a magic formula. You still have to be in a calorific deficit during your eating window, but cutting out that 500, 800, 1000 calorie meal makes that calorie deficit much, much easier to control. My lifestyle dictates a slightly different eating window. My fast is more like 17, seven, even 18, six. I don't break my fast until three or four in the afternoon and finish my final meal at around 10 in the evening. It just fits in with my work lifestyle. I drop the kids at school, I'm a busy guy and I don't really have time to stop for food. So I just get on with my working day, pick the kids up at three and then break my fast after that. And I've made my food decisions even simpler. Every day I start and finish the day with a protein shake. I know each shake is between 350 and 400 calories. That's 800 calories for the day, which means I can have a big main meal of pretty much anything I want at around seven o'clock. And that fills me right up for the day. Just gone four o'clock and it's time for me to break my fast with a shake. 250 ml of no added sugar almond milk. Just 42 calories in 250 ml. Next up, throw in a lot of crushed ice one calorie strawberry jelly and about 120 calories worth of banana let's whisk him up now we're going to sweeten this bad boy up with some isolate whey protein low in fat low in sugar 24 grams of protein two scoops of that 112 calories and makes it taste thick lush and creamy 150 grams of frozen strawberries, just 45 calories. 310 calories in this bad boy. It tastes absolutely amazing. And by the time you've finished it, 
You stuffed. That's a tasty 250 gram steak. Works out at just under 700 calories. 150 calories of sweet potato chips and 100 calories of full fat coleslaw and I'm bringing this entire meal in at around 1000 calories. It's half past 10 at night, that steak was brilliant but my sweet tooth started to kick in and luckily I've only had 1300 calories for the day so far. Sex it up a bit with a banana. I'm up to about 165 calories now. The absolute legend that is pure unsweetened cocoa powder. Big dollop of that bad boy. I throw in about 50 calories worth, which is a lot, but it gives me that rich, thick, chocolatey taste. Look at how dark that is. Sweeten things up with one scoop of vanilla protein and one scoop of this bad boy, caramel flavour. We're having proper pudding, chocolate, vanilla, caramel, milk and ice. It's like an ice cream and my favourite ice cream is mint chop chip. So we're going to throw some mint leaves in there. We're at about 310 calories, but I'm going to sneak another 20 calories in with this sexy little number. Little bit of mint flavouring, 40 calories a serving. I'm only going to put half a serving in just for a bit of taste. 330 calories, and if you've got a sweet tooth, this is going to satisfy it. Oh, there's loads. Honestly, so rich and thick. So many layers and levels to it. You've got the sweetness from that banana and that vanilla, and there's just that underlying smoothiness from the caramel. And then it's just topped up and like brought to life with that mint and that rich dark cocoa powder running all the way through it. There's nothing finer. If you got this in McDonald's, you'd be over the moon. And there's so much of it. You could quite easily have only half of that at 165 calories. And you'd still be happy. But I'm a greedy bastard. So I'm having the lot. Nom nom. How do you cope with being hungry all the time? I'm not, and I haven't been for five months. They say it takes some people a couple of weeks to adjust to it, but for me, it was straight away. And I think hunger's more in the head, unless you're properly starving, of course. It's just a frame of mind. I know that I'm not eating anything until four o'clock, so I don't even think about it. And when I do eat, I eat loads. The two shakes that I have to break my fast and end my day are really filling. And most of the time, you're not even hungry. You're just bored. So keep busy. Or drink some water. More often than not, you're not hungry. You're just a bit thirsty. And that water will take away those pangs. Must make you really tired. I bet you've got no energy. I've probably got more energy than ever. Some of that will be from losing weight. Some of it will be from the increased exercise I'm doing. But think about it. You always feel a little bit tired in the afternoon after you've had lunch, especially if it's been a big lunch. Your body diverts all its resources to digesting that food, just as you get into the end of your working day when you need it most. I bet you get really grumpy and can't concentrate. Not at all. My concentration levels are up. And as for being grumpy, I'm always grumpy. But knowing that I'm doing this and losing weight puts me in a much better frame of mind. What about dehydration? You must get really thirsty. This is a calorie fast, not a liquid fast. So you can still drink as much water as you like, as much black coffee as you like, and as much unsweetened tea as you like. Technically, you could probably have a Coke Zero, but somehow that feels like cheating. And I've got nothing to back this up, but I think it might spoil some of the benefits of the fast. 
You can't be getting enough nutrients. What about your vitamins and your minerals? The same could be said for anything. Are you getting enough vitamins and nutrients eating 5,000 calories of McDonald's every day? Just do it sensibly and when you are eating, eat healthy food. Nice shakes have 30 grams of protein in them, almond milk and plenty of different types of fresh fruit. I can then pack my main meal full of protein, fats and carbohydrates. I go to the gym and work out and stuff so I wouldn't be able to do it. Nine times out of ten, I'm working out in a fasted state and I don't feel any weaker or more tired for it. There are some limited studies that show that performance isn't quite as high when working out in a fasted state. But there are plenty of other studies that show there are big benefits to it. I don't think you can fast when you're pregnant, can you? But I'm not. doesn't sound very healthy. There are loads of health benefits that are claimed and some of them have more proof than others. For those of you who regularly watch the channel, you will know that I've already covered many of the claimed benefits of fasting in another video when I did an extended fast. If you haven't checked that out, have a look at that now. But I'd just like to cover the main three reasons why I do intermittent fasting and why I'm going to continue to do it. The first is time. Just eating one meal a day saves me so much time. Not just preparing food, but eating food. A lot of working mums and dads say they don't have time to go to the gym or exercise because they've got to look after their kids. Those protein shakes that I have take five minutes max to prepare and I can eat them in five or ten minutes. You're saving at least an hour there. That can now become your exercise time. The second reason means I have to calorie count much, much less. I don't really like calorie counting, but I know that those shakes are around 300, 350, which is 600 calories, leaves me a thousand calories for my main meal, and I'm only hitting 1600 calories. That's a huge calorie deficit for me, and has meant for the last 20 weeks, I've been losing just over three pounds a week. The third reason, it just simplifies your life. There are so few decisions you have to make and you don't need to show anywhere near as much willpower doing a fast as you do doing a diet. There's temptation there every day for breakfast. There's temptation there every day for lunch. You can make so many of the wrong decisions. Whereas if you're only having that one main meal a day, it makes your choices much, much wider and much more open. It also makes things a lot simpler for your body. It takes a few hours to digest your food, a few hours for your insulin levels to drop. If you're doing that three or four times a day, your body is constantly working on your food. If you're cutting that down into a much smaller window, your body can get the digestion work done and have plenty of time to work on other things like regenerating cells, producing bacteria and fighting disease. Now I'm not saying that your body doesn't do that anyway all the time, but the fasting makes your body into a much more efficient machine. So time, fat loss and simplicity. Those are my three main reasons for doing the intermittent fast. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode, guys. I'm just a fat middle-aged dad trying to learn how to get fit and healthy and sharing that knowledge with you every Monday. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next week. Woohoo!